If you're a course creator, sell digital products, or have services online, then you probably know the importance of having an opt-in freebie, something that's gonna help grow your audience and grow your email list. Now, if you'd like to create an opt-in freebie PDF, something that's a beautiful, well-designed document that people can opt in to get for free, but you're not a designer by trade, well, you might be feeling a little bit overwhelmed because you don't know how to design and you really wanna create something that you're proud of and people are excited to download. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to design a beautiful, well-designed opt-in freebie PDF. Now, if the idea of starting completely from scratch really overwhelms you, even with the tips I'm about to share, I do have templates both for an ebook and a workbook and you can find the links to them in the description below and you can use them as a base to get started working on your PDF. All right, so the first thing we want to do is set up our page. You want to go to create a design and I'm going to put in A4. You can also use US letter depending on your own preferences. So just make sure that it's set up in portrait. Then you're going to go up to file and settings and you're going to make sure you put in show margins, which I've got here, and then also add guides. So here we can create some guidelines to help us make a good design. So we can go into custom and decide how many we'd like. The main thing you need to think about is do I want an even amount or uneven amount? And then how much content do you actually need to put in here? If you've got a lot of content, sometimes having more columns is quite useful. Think of a newspaper. It's got a lot of columns in it because there's a lot of information. Whereas if yours is quite light on content, you may want not as many. So it's really just thinking about what's going to work for you, what's going to work for your content and experimenting. Sometimes you just need to try something out if it's not working and change it up. And over time, you'll get used to what works well for you. So we might go for six in this case. You also want to make sure you have gaps in between like this and then click add guides. So this gives us guidelines for the page and don't worry, these are not going to show at the end, even if you print it or whatever. These are just for you to see as you design and you can always turn them off if you want to check out your design, make sure it all looks all right without them in the way. So the first thing you'd want to do with a PDF is create your cover. So we can go and get image, put this on the page. So you want to really think about an image that's going to attract your audience, what they're going to be interested in. And we want to make our cover something that's exciting and bold and really shows what this is about. So we want to keep it quite simple to not overdo it with too many things. It's confusing. We want to just make it really clear. What is this about and is it for them? So we can go into elements and grab a square. And we can put this in the background here to put our text on because what you need to consider too with a cover is making sure there's high contrast for the title so it's very easy to read. So if you have a background image, you want to either put a block color on top that you can put your text or you want to make this semi-transparent, something where you're going to make sure that it's super easy to read. So also consider that image too. If you made it semi-transparent, also make sure that the actual photo itself doesn't have too much contrast that makes it hard to read. Find something that's very light in you know, contrast, something that all the colors are quite similar. See here, this one's too much contrast. We've got black and then we've got this light blue and white. Too much contrast, it wouldn't be a good one for using as a cover where you just made it transparent. You'd want something where it's very even tones and not too much contrast. So because this one does have a lot of contrast, I'm just going to use a square. And as you can see, I've already started using my guidelines and decided to put it across four columns. So when you're using your columns, you don't have to put everything just in one column. You decide how many columns it goes across each time. So now we can put our header in and center that. So you can write in your header. Then you'd probably also want to put like subtitles, your name, things like that. So adding in all those details onto your header and using those guides. So here we want to send everything. And it's all about using your guidelines to make sure that everything looks really neat. And we also want our headline to be really big and then all the other text to be smaller. So we have some hierarchy there too. All right, so let's start putting an internal page. So for an internal page, we want a header and your header, you want to be big and you want to choose how many things it goes across. So in this case, we'll go across three columns. So we can say, And we can right align it. Now 
Now you want your header text to be at least twice the size of any other body copy, but you do want to make sure at the very least it's twice the size of the body, often even bigger. So again, thinking about hierarchy here. So now for our body copy, so we'll get some text. So now we're going to put our body copy in and we can use again these guidelines to do different things with our text. So we could here have a text that goes just across two. We could have a text that goes across three. You could have text that goes from margin to margin if you wanted or going across four columns. You're just using these as guides and it makes everything look really neat. So if we always started on this one here, we'd want to make sure that they all start on the same one. Or if you wanted to, you could make everything just sit on the margin and then always end on one of these columns like this. So it's about consistency. Use your guidelines to help you and make sure that whatever you choose, you start to choose a consistency with it. So wherever you want to start as your left alignment, keep that up. Now we can also, as you can see, then utilize this to create two columns. So now we can have actually two columns of text side by side. Now, if you want to be sure that things are sitting exactly the same, you can also up the top here on the rulers, drag down, create a line there. And that way you can double check that things are lined up correctly as well. So the same with images. So if we were to put an image in, as you can see here, we can put it so it hits that column again. And then we can fit it in here. As you can see, as you pull things up, it snaps to you. See those little pink dotted lines to show us that it lines up with that text there. So as you can see, you can start to create a really interesting dynamic layout by utilizing these columns and just playing around with it. So having things go across a few columns, two, three. And so as you can see, the more columns you have, the more diverse you can actually make your design. So that's why you may want to play around, maybe try less, try more, see what works for you and the content you're using. Now we could also add in pull quotes so we can grab a block as a background. Can add some text into it and that also adds variety into your design by having little pull out bits of text maybe having blocks of text with some color behind it like a color block like this adding in images you can even add different graphics or you know information graphics things like charts and things like that all those sort of things is going to add a lot of variety to your design and make it really interesting and dynamic and so it's more interesting for the reader to look at. It's not looking like a real plain thing that somebody just put together in Word where it's just text and real simple. This is going to make something look much more designed and therefore it's going to look more professional and more enjoyable to actually use. Now, finally, creating workbook pages. So for workbook pages, let's grab some text here first. We can put in our question. Now, in a workbook setting, you'd want to use the full page. So going right across, you can then grab a square. You want to over here, get the border. So add a little border and we're going to make it clear. And then we've got something that people can fill in. Now, if you want to make check boxes, again, same, you can use the rectangle and turn it into little squares. And then we can duplicate these, make them go down the page, for however many you need. Now, if you select them, you can also go up to position and you can choose here, tidy up. Now, mine's already perfect, so it's saying I don't need to. So let's just make them a little out of whack to show you. Tidy up and then it puts them so they're all evenly spaced. And you can make sure that they sit in there in between that little column space. So they're all lined up perfectly. And you've now got some beautiful check boxes. You can add text to them. So see, we can use that little column margin there to make sure that everything's nice and neat. It's all about using these guidelines to make it super neat and tidy to look professional. Because when everything's lined up, that's when something looks more professional. It's when things are sort of out of whack, even if it's slightly, like if this was just slightly off like that, it's going to look less professional and more messy and it just downgrades your design. So having these guidelines in place is really going to make a huge difference in terms of making it look professional and also dynamic and interesting. So finally, let's add a link. So we can go grab a box again. We can make it go across two here. Now 
Now you want to put your text in, then you want to highlight it and you'll see this come up. You can click link and you can add your link in. Done. Now it will be linked. Now, if you don't want the underline, just select it and then up here, click underline and it will remove it, but it's still a clickable link. So once we download this as a PDF, people can actually click on that and it'll go to that website. So that's the main things you'd probably want to use when you're creating an opt-in. You want to make a nice header design. You want to fill it in with your content and you may want to add some workbook elements. Now, if you want to make these fillable, I do have a video on how you can do that. I'll put it in a card above so you can go check that out to see how you can actually make this fillable. So the final thing we want to do is now download it. So go to share, download, and you want to select the PDF standard and download it. So I hope you found that helpful. And again, if you're feeling a bit overwhelmed starting from scratch and want some templates to really help you get started so that you've got a base and then you can tweak it to make it your own, check the links in the description below to the templates that I have to help get you started. You'll also find some opt-in promotion templates, which are really handy once you've actually created that opt-in freebie. If you want some graphics to then help you promote that freebie and really get it out there and make it look impressive so that people are really excited to download it. And if you'd like to learn more about graphic design, branding and using Canva, make sure you subscribe to this channel and I'll see you next time.